All right, welcome back to the Copywriters Podcast with your host, the world's greatest copywriting coach, David Garfinkel. David, how are you doing today, man? Nathan, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. And we have another special guest interview today lined up for the listeners. So I'm pretty excited for what we've got in store today. Yeah, I am too. Um, our guest today has a curious connection to copywriting. Though he is not a copywriter, or even a traditional entrepreneur by trade, he is one hell of a copywriter anyway. His name is Dickie Bush, and he describes himself as a macro investor. I'm not sure what that means, but I think it has to do with hedge funds and numbers with lots of commas in them. It's a paid program he has that he had to learn how to write copy to sell it. He did. We'll talk about the program in a minute. Yesterday, he told me he's getting 10% conversion on his sales page. Uh, not half bad. That's a skilled copywriter, no matter how you look at it. Dickie is a, also a keen student of, and I would say an expert in growth, growth of all kinds, how people grow, how systems grow, how businesses grow. This, of course, is very closely related to what we do as copywriters, since a good copywriter will help a business grow tremendously, sometimes exponentially. And there's more, and we'll get into that in our freewheeling conversation to come. But first, here's my contribution to the theory of growth. Copy is powerful. You're responsible for how you use what you hear on this podcast. And most of the time, common sense is all you need. But if you make extreme claims, and if, or if you're writing copy for offers in highly regulated industries like health and finance and business opportunity, you may want to get a legal review after you write and before you start using your copy. My larger clients do this all the time. So Dickie, before we start talking about growth, let's talk about writing. You're an online writer. You've um, gotten a lot of interest in, in your posts, which I think originate on Substack, and uh, you've got this Ship 30 for 30 program. How did that all come about? So uh, first off, thanks for having me on. I'm super excited to, to be here and get to chat with you guys today. Sure. The, the origin of my writing online started as I came into 2020 with, I'd been doing a lot of work, reading, learning, a bunch of different things. Um, and so I kind of built up this routine where every week I would sit down and say, you know, what did I learn this week? What did I read this week? And that was kind of laying to rest in the back of my notebook. And over time, I said, you know, I'm building all this up, but I need a forcing function to better understand it and actually kind of internalize it. And that was the, the result of that was my newsletter, um, which started 52 weeks ago this week. So <laughs> this will be my 52nd edition. Congratulations. And that kind of kicked, yeah, thank you. That kind of kicked off my online writing journey. And so from there, I really focused on just you know, I wasn't too, too caught up in growing it, but just said, I'm going to do this for 52 weeks and see what happens. Because from everyone I talked to, it's anyone who kind of gets over that 26 week hump in the middle of it is more than likely going to see some success just from the network effects. I like to say that no one has 52 shitty newsletters. They have 10 or they figure it out after 52 of them. So you know, that was my goal was to get all the way there. Um, and then recently in the last probably three months, I, I doubled down on writing Twitter threads, which has been a very fun way to kind of take ideas from podcasts or books or things I'm learning and put them in a medium that is a little bit different than say a blog post, right? Because tweets. Can, can, can I interrupt you about that? Because that's mm. how I, I didn't mention this yet, but that's how I found out about you. You had a very famous name in our copywriting community, sign up for your 30 day ship 30 for 30 program, Craig Clemens. And you did this Twitter thread where you broke down the structure of his sales letters, which blew me away. And I shared it with a group of other copywriters uh, on email thread. And one guy who's probably the sharpest or the second sharpest analyst in that group. And these are guys who Brian Kurtz, if you ever heard of him, put them on 
Mount Rushmore of, I mean, really guys who had controls for border. He said, God, he nailed it. That's perfect. And so I thought, I'd love to have you on the podcast and, and find out. But anyway, you know, please continue with your story. I just wanted to point out that um, Craig Clemens thinks enough of you to spend money. And, and, and I think he said on Twitter, after, after you wrote down the sales letter, he said, well, thanks for writing the outline for my book. Now I can write the book. <laughs> Yeah, the the story of of how I got in touch with Craig is really born out of my Twitter threads. So I had written five or six that had gone somewhat viral and got picked up by a few people who you know liked and retweeted it. And so one day I just put out basically the the focus of my threads were I really like to understand the way people see the world and really dive into their worldview. So six or seven of them I would listen to five or six podcast episodes, read their book and say, you know, how does this person see the world? What are their core principles that they repeat, you know, time and time again? And you get that when you listen to, really it, it kind of coincides when these authors go on book tours and podcast kind of tours. So I'd listen to five or six of them and say, okay, what are the things that they're actually repeating a ton of? And then I would try and just atomize it into a Twitter thread. And the, the beauty of Twitter threads is, you know, there's seven or eight tweets, but they're all kind of standalone ideas. And so people can comment on one of them if, if one of them resonates. So it's just a fun way in a, in a unique medium. And from there, it was, I, I put out a tweet that said, you know, who should I do kind of a thinker deep dive on? And Craig said, it, it, it'd be great if you, you did one on me. And I said, absolutely. You know, here's a, a skill that I've never been introduced to copywriting. And I'm kind of doing it already because on Twitter, the goal of every Twitter thread is to get the reader to stop scrolling, right? And this competition for attention, which is fundamentally what copywriting is all about, Twitter is such a cool medium to practice it because you have people just scrolling, 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 and how are you going to write a tweet that gets them to stop? So that's kind of the goal. Every tweet becomes a, a practice in copywriting and every thread is, is really a, a small landing page design, right? You need to get someone to click through and look at the 10 tweets that come after that, right? So I dove into Craig's worldview and said, you know, how does this guy write such legendary sales pages and, and videos? And I just kind of listened to everything he said in a bunch of different speeches and, and a bunch of different podcast episodes and read all his articles and said, you know, here's how he goes about doing things. And so that's now internalized for me. That's the best part of all the writing I do online is that once I do it, I've internalized the ideas and sharing it with others is just free upside. You weren't writing once a week for 52 weeks. You were writing every day. Is that right? So I, I love this spiel that I've been kind of going on recently. And so I spent the first nine months writing weekly and trying to find my voice, publishing a weekly blog post. And I, I struggled to find really the ideas that resonated most heavily with me. And so I pivoted and said, I want to start writing every day because there are a lot of ideas that I want to explore that I felt were too long for tweets, but too short for blog posts. And we'll get into this. This was the origin of Ship 30 for 30, which is a 30-day writing challenge uh, with a community of writers who published 30 atomic essays in 30 days. So an atomic essay is, is a small screenshot. We'll link to it, but it's a small screenshot essay where you read the entire thing in just one screenshot. And it's a medium that really lends itself to idea exploration. And so by doing it every day, you kind of accelerate the idea exploration process. And I think for early writers in any skill, if, if you try to just write weekly, you're going to struggle to really find your voice. But if you accelerate that process and write daily, you're going to, you, you have seven times more ideas to, to find out what resonates with you and with others. So I call it making noise and listening for signal. And atomic essays accelerate your noise making, which in turn accelerates your signal finding. Yeah, and you know, among among people who aren't into your system, as far as I know, I, I had this one client, Cliff Mees, and he was writing 
really good daily emails in the hypnosis training niche. And one day I asked him, how do you come up with so much good stuff every day? And he said, I've been doing it for 10 years. You know, it's like you, you get into the cycle, you get into the rhythm and you discover capabilities you never thought you could discover in yourself. Yeah. And the only way to do that is to write every day. When you do it on a weekly basis, you just don't have the feedback loops. You don't have the just writing is about finding the ideas that resonate with you and with others and doubling down on that overlap. Right. So you, you put ideas out into the world, you listen for what resonates with you and what resonates with others. You find that overlap in the Venn diagram, you double down on those and then you repeat and you keep honing and honing and honing that message. And soon enough you find, okay, I have a core group of people who are paying attention to what I'm writing. I love to write about it. And then you found like, it's all, that's the, the hard part is getting there. Once you're there, words just flow out of my fingertips now, right? So that's kind of what I'm encouraging with Ship 30 for 30 is you want to accelerate that process and not make the same mistake I did of publishing weekly blog posts into the void of, of six readers, right? Yeah. So, so describe, I mean, how does Ship 30 for 30 work? So you, on day one, you join a online community of everyone else who's taking part in the challenge. And this is, takes place in a Slack channel. We give you all of the resources to perform your daily writing habit. And so it's hard to kind of explain in words, but an atomic essay is, is one single screenshot. So we give you templates to upload your text and write your daily essays. So all you have to do is paste in your text at the end of it. And it makes this nice aesthetic screenshot. And then we encourage everyone to upload their essays onto Twitter. And it's actually an, an exercise in copywriting is how I explain every single essay that they write, right? So they write a daily essay that's got a screenshot, but their goal is for people to actually click on that picture on Twitter and read it, right? So I explain to them, you need to double down on the ADA framework at the start of your tweet and say, your goal is to get someone to click through on this, right? So how are you gonna do that? How are you gonna get their attention? How are you gonna get them to stop scrolling? So not only is it a 30 day writing challenge where they explore their ideas, they're gonna become copywriters along the way. Otherwise, they're gonna have no feedback, right? So it's it's a very fun challenge that way. I'm, I'm curious, have, have you studied martial arts? Because this sounds a little like martial arts training to me. I have not, but I think that's on my bucket list to do a, a little bit of a Brazilian jiu-jitsu at some point. Okay, just curious. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I really love the idea. It's You're not trying to sell a product or, or start a business or um, do an affiliate promotion. You're just trying to get someone's attention and keep it and get them to click and, and get them to share the idea, um, which I think I've never thought of this before, but it seems to me, and I love your thoughts on this, I heard somewhere that content is the single most consumed commodity in the world today. Um, being a coffee drinker, I have a hard time believing that, but I'll, I'll accept it for the moment. It, it seems like if you can create an idea that will get, get people's attention by clicking and, get, and, and then go viral by, by virtue of the idea itself, not the graphics, not the offer, not the name, but just the idea. Um, that's the core of business these days in, in, in one sense. In one oh, sense. A absolutely. And I think that the, the rise of audience first products is here to stay where you no longer want to create a product and say, let me find people to sell it to. You want to gain attention from a core group of people who have the same problems and resonate with the same ideas and then you simply ask them what their problems are and you solve them. And then you position yourself as a very clear solution to that problem. And that's where the copy comes in. That's, that's, that's awesome. So what kind of, what different kinds of people, obviously Craig is one, but what other kinds of people have you gotten in your ship 30 for 30 program? All kinds. They, so we have 165 people in the first cohort and within the Slack channel, there are, 10, no, I'd say 20 sub channels 
psychology, philosophy, business, productivity, leadership, all of those, where every day, every member posts their essay in that sub-channel to kind of get feedback and explore different ideas with different people. Um, so really what it is, is this audience first product, quote unquote, came from me really wanting to start writing every day for 30 days. So I started sharing content around the importance and benefits of writing every day for 30 days, right? So I, anyone that resonated with that faced fundamentally the same problems, right? They, they struggled with writing consistently. They, they started and stopped. They overthought their writing, right? So these things kind of begin to write themselves when you, when you hold on to a core group of people who an audience is not a demographic. It's not a, a certain type of person. It's simply people with the same problems. And then once you have that, it, so solving their problems is very easy. Yeah, that, that's, that's wonderful. You know, one thing I like about this is it seems increasingly in the academy, universities, in the media, in the conversations you have at work, if you work in for someone else in a large organization. And since I live in San Francisco, what you might say to the barista at Starbucks when you're getting your cold brew, all of that language is policed. It's, it's getting increasingly policed. And, and from a, you know, intellectual libertarian point of view, it seems like, you know, aside from maybe threatening violence or, you know, extreme aggression, other than that, you can pretty much say what you want in, a, in, in an environment like this. And you can develop a market of people who like it and those who don't like it instead of, you know, writing you up, just go away. Right. It's not about the number of people that don't get it. It's about the number of people that do. And so every unfollower you have, every person who clicks on your essay and says, ah, this is not for me. That's just you pruning your message, right? The pathway to mediocre results is trying to please everyone. And I think that's a staple of all, all kinds of life. Yeah, I agree. So um, we'll, we'll get back to 30, uh, ship 30 for 30 in a, in a, just a little bit, but would you talk about your, your studies and your thoughts and, and your findings about growth? I mean, that's always fascinating to me and I've never found anyone who concentrates on it before. Sure. My, you know, realization that I talked about earlier that came from me writing every day was I struggled for the first nine months to kind of have a, a, a lens to view my writing through. Right. I was very interested in dis what seemed like disparate interests, financial markets, health and wellness, startups, macroeconomics, writing, productivity, goal setting, things like that. And so I took a step back and said, you know, what, what is it about these things that I'm really interested in? And, and Richard Feynman has a great quote that says, nature uses only the longest threads to weave her tapestry. And so I, I said, what are the long threads that kind of weave through all of my interests? And after some reflection, it was the improvement of a system, a person or a business that I was really interested in. And so this is just the growth, right? And what that allowed me to do is have these seemingly disparate interests like startups or, or markets or, you know, health and wellness, but view them through a lens of they're simply systems and people trying to improve, right? So it, it honed, it created a lens for me to view the world through. And now everything I see, I, I see is a system and how is that system trying to improve? And writing about that has been the words just flow effortlessly from my fingertips once you kind of find that thing of like, oh, this feels right and that resonates with me. Have you studied Deming at all or is that too old school for you? Study, can you say that again? Yeah, Edward Deming. He, he was the guy who invented the, the idea of systems more as an industrial process. And I think the Japanese took his idea and improved on it called Kaizen, you know, mm. gradual uh, improvement. Mm -hmm. I, I need to. to. I need to. 
Yeah. Okay. Just, just curious. I mean, you're, you're here in 2021 and I'm reaching back into the past. I'm more interested in what you're doing, but I'm just curious what your influences were. So, yeah, it's, it's really, you know, I've dug into some, um, I think it's Deborah Meadows. She talks a lot about systems. Um, the fifth, the fifth discipline by oh, Peter, Peter Senge. Yeah. Yeah. So all of those kind of talk about systems and that's what I'm digging into now because I actually hadn't read any of those as I pruned my interests. And then I said, Oh, these people have written all about this, right? They, they've, they've said, what are the first principles that we threw all these things? So now I'm kind of digging into that. That's very cool. And you're also an investor, correct? Correct. So what I do full time is I'm a macro hedge fund portfolio manager. So the way I describe that is I, my goal every day is to try and predict the global economy and figure out how that unfolds, which has been quite a wild ride in 2020, to say the least, but 2021 already off to a, a swift start. So we'll see. Yeah. You don't take small challenges, do you? No, not at all. Okay. Well, I'm impressed. Um, yeah, that's, that's very cool. So, um, tell us, you know, one more thing about, uh, or maybe a couple more things about, um, ship 30 for 30 and how people can get, you have a new cohort every month. Is that right? So right now we're working on figuring out the right cadence. And I think a monthly cadence will be the right thing to do. Um, but then there's a lot of different lenses or not lenses, but directions you can go with it where we can encourage people to continue their writing by following this path or you know there's a lot of different ways but ship 30 for 30.com uh, is the website and you can kind of find out all the information about joining and I, I highly encourage anyone who who wants to really study or learn anything to take the challenge and say here's what I'll do for 30 days I'm going to write 30 days of copy right I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pretend every day that I have to sell X, Y, and Z, and I'm going to write a small sales page every day for 30 days. Yeah. I mean, I like this so much more than just journaling or um, I don't know how familiar you are with the tropes of copywriting, but uh, sitting down and, and copying a hundred of the world's best headlines every day. I mean, it's good. It, it gets the rhythm and the language into your neurology, but th this... This is about generative thinking. This is about really learning to create and focus and, and reach out to others who, who are in your uh, problem tribe. <laughs> right, exactly. And I, I love, I think that's probably from the born letters, right, of, of copying uh, certain essays every single day for a long time, right? Yeah, Gary, Gary suggested that. A, a lot of people do. Um, I mean, you know, it, it's... It's not a bad idea. It's like if you think of how uh, painters used to be trained, they would go to the Louvre and they would, you know, copy all of the paintings and, you know, uh, uh, you know, musicians transcribe stuff by ear. It, it, it develops a, a lot of awareness and, and sensitivity and so forth. But you're talking about taking it to a more proactive next level. I love that. Yeah, I think the only way to learn things is not just in case or just in time. Sorry. The only way to learn things is just in time, not just in case where putting things into practice because you have to, because you're working on a project that, that forces you to is in my opinion, the best way, because you could read every great copywriting book for the next two months, or you could launch a product where you actually have to write a copy page one of those is going to get you really good results and the other is going to is really just planning prior or planning masked as procrastination right well i i i take a slightly different view as a coach i'd say read read the books and maybe outline a few things and then do what you're talking about uh there's a lot of people go into copywriting with um very ill-informed ideas i guess you're going to have to learn uh, the hard way sooner or later anyway, but it, it's better to reduce the odds of the number of train wrecks you're going to have starting out as a copywriter. Yeah, that's fair. All right. Well, uh, any, any other thoughts? You, by the way, is that the New York public library in your background? I'm trying to. Oh, uh, so this is my, this is my, so I'm, I'm home in my, my childhood bedroom and it is as, as much as I'd like to 
to display that to the world, I think this elegant library is much better. It's it's truly impressive. If if you guys are only listening to this on on uh, audio, you ought to at least get get a little grab of it on YouTube because it's pretty awesome. Thank you, Dickie. No problem, guys. And and yeah, this has been great. I think that what you guys are doing is, is tremendous. I think copywriting is what I've learned is life is sales and everything you're doing is trying to win others to your way of thinking and copywriting is just doing that with the written word where you just it's such a cool problem to me because someone is going to land on your content with a certain frame of mind and you have one goal is to win them to your way of thinking and how you go about doing that is such an interesting problem in psychology it takes everything everything about the world you know incentives psychology money all in one spot and uh, it's just such a cool problem yeah we think so too that's why we do it <laughs> dickie before we're out of here one more time where can people go to join your program or to find out more about what you're doing sure so i spend probably too much time on twitter and that's at Dickie Bush, D-I-C-K-I-E-B-U-S-H, all one word. And I'm sure we'll link it in show notes and whatnot. If you want to learn more about Ship 30 for 30, you can go to ship 30 F O dot com. So ship the number 30 for the number 30.com and learn all about. We have a February cohort that is launching. I'm not sure exactly when this is airing, but that's the current sign up right now. And so we'd love to have anyone who wants to. to yeah, start we'll, we'll be uh, uh, running this in the middle, middle of February. So will you have one in March or April? Yes, we'll have a March cohort. So if you're listening to this right now, hopefully things have accelerated and you get to join an even bigger cohort with more people. Awesome. Awesome. And David, any final thoughts before we're out of here today? No, um, I, I hope everyone enjoyed this really unusual uh, type of show. Uh, Dickie's unique uh, to begin with, but our, our approach to the topic is kind of different than what we normally do. And uh, Dickie, thank you for being here. It's really wonderful. Hey, I appreciate you guys. This has been fun. Awesome. All right. If you want more of your Copywriters Podcast fix, head on over to copywriterspodcast.com. And until next time, we will catch you later. See you later.